Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On January 14, 2016, His Excellency President David A. Granger graced this honorable house with his presence and did address us on independence and resilience. Our people's path to economic progress and went on to declare this year, 2016, the year of renaissance, given our celebration of 50 years as an independent state. Sir, his effervescent leadership and guidance have provided the vision for this 2016 budget titled Stimulating Growth, Restoring Confidence, The Good Life Beckons. This budget will go into the annals of history as the most significant budget in the last two decades. I say this, sir, because the Honorable Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan, has captured the vision and spirit of this coalition government of consensus united to create a new economic and social order for the benefit of all Guyanese. Allow me, therefore, Mr. Speaker, to extend congratulations to the Honorable Minister of Finance and his committed and dedicated staff. Mr. Speaker, during the past eight months, the transformation of the social, economic, and political landscape has been phenomenal. Sir, how can I not mention this, our new environment? Just take a look outside the windows at our surroundings, sir, and we will be able to understand what the APNU AFC government is about. We're about restoring Georgetown. Sir, during those months, we as a coalition, you be very careful, I'm the Minister of Social Protection, responsible for young children. During those months, we as a coalition force confronted the crisis situation with utmost dexterity and I'm sure would be able to face up to the Herculean task with courage and confidence. Mr. Speaker, on August 21st, 2015, I indicated to this House and the nation that our government will continue to put in place measures to improve the efficacy of our social welfare programs. I am therefore, sir, happy to report on the $9.9 .9 billion in 2015 allocated to the Ministry of Social Protection for the execution of its four programs, namely administration, social services, labor, and child care protection. I am also happy, sir, to report that the ministry fulfilled the objectives of its six-point action plan. Training of staff, specialized training for our indigenous peoples, improved benefits for pensioners, and programs specific to vulnerable and disadvantaged groups, provision of safe and clean environment for those persons in need of shelter, labor, ensuring the rights of workers and employers, and early childhood development program. Sir, prior to this budget, I did extend an invitation to the honorable member, Ms. Passad, who spoke before me. Had Ms. Passad taken up that invitation, yeah. sir, I would have been able to explain to her and to inform her of the policies that we are embarking on and also of the various programs. Sir, but unfortunately, I trust that my presentation 
will be able to so inform the honorable member. In 2015, the Ministry of Social Protection resuscitated the Women of Worth program. We resuscitated it. With the Guyana Bank for Trade and Industry, which provided loans for more than 90 female single parents. Regretfully, we inherited a bankrupt program from the 29.4 million in loans, approximately $22 million were non-performing at the end of December 2014, which represents 77% of WOW's portfolio. It cannot be business as usual, sir. We cannot continue on the same broken, ruined track. For last year, we also upgraded the skills and competencies of staff from probation, welfare, counter trafficking, child protection, and industrial relations departments. We collaborated with the Canadian High Commission for persons from the hinterland communities where they were trained in rural and hinterland, where they were trained, sir in the prevention of sexual and gender-based violence in rural and hinterland communities, as well as child abuse, domestic violence, youths in conflict with the law, substance abuse, trafficking in persons, and suicide. We engage an architect to address issues, re a new building to house our ministry given that we are presently located in five buildings across Georgetown. We increased senior citizens' pension from $13,125 to $17,000. And further, sir, with corporate and the community, we, we looked at the facilities where the pensions were distributed and we began an exercise to upgrade them with more co comfortable sitting and accommodation for our senior citizens. <laughs> Sir, we hosted a national gender conference and crafted a policy document which has been circulated with key stakeholders for pertinent feedback. We translated key laws into the indigenous language and braille for the visually impaired. We are grateful, sir, for the support the government received on this project from UNICEF. And finally, sir, we continued working to achieve universal early childhood care and establish childhood centers to provide quality teachings for our zero to four year old children. And may I inform those on the other side, sir, who may not have taken time to read the answer that last year when I mentioned this program, I did mention that this was a continuation, that I met it there, sir. We have nothing to hide, but I must also remind the members on the other side, sir, that in 1992, 1993, 1994, 1995, 1996, 1997, and 98, had it not been for the economic recovery program, come, Mr. Speaker, I do not know what programs the then government would have had to roll out. Trafficking in persons. Here they go. Mr. Speaker, I am happy to report that for the first time ever in Guyana, we had a conviction in a tip case where restitution was ordered for the victim. What is distressing in Guyana is the preponderance of women who are tip perpetrators. The majority of the 31 suspects for last year were women. This is contrary to global statistics, which I will share with this Honorable House. Children comprise 
more than 30% of the 59 victims for last year. In addition, sex is the major driver of human trafficking here. More than 80% of tip victims are forced into carnal economics, the flesh industry, sir. The labor sector absorbs just about 16% of tip victims coming a distant second. Mr. Speaker, we have four ongoing tip matters in the court, and I am hopeful that we will secure four convictions for these matters. For we must rid our nation of this despicable man-made cancer. As part of the overall plan to do so, and I would like to inform the honorable member who spoke before me, that there was a room named trafficking in persons in the Ministry of Social Protection. And this is what we are going to do. The unit will be resuscitated in 2016 and transformed into a department with these additional features. There will be an increase in staff with private investigators coming on board. There will be legal officers, senior case managers and junior case managers and an administrative officer. <laughs> Sir, we are serious about TIP in Guyana and will spare no effort to put the critical infrastructure in place to ensure the eventual eradication of the man-made threat. And in the meantime, the severest punishment for all convicted perpetrators, be they female or male. In the quest, sir, we will seek funding to build a home for male tip, vic tip victims 18 years and above. To date, we have been able to establish an MOU with an NGO, and we have been able to provide a safe place for our women. And so we want to move on to take care of our men too. This is part of a menu of measures we will pursue this year, 2016. Mr. Speaker, in the Minister of Finance's introduction to this budget, he stated on page 15, para 4, 1, the policies, programs, reforms, and measures envisioned in this budget are designed to stimulate the economy to achieve higher growth rates. It is an economy which is growing at even higher rates, with the benefits being more equitably distributed which will enable us to bring the good life closer to reality, end of quote. Permit me, Mr. Speaker, to return to the theme of this budget, which has lured us into this honorable house. It demands reiterating, stimulating growth, restoring confidence, the good life beckons. And may I say to the honorable member in the back bench there, on the other side, that Minister Simona Brooms remains a minister, and she is a junior minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the good life is ahead of us, beckoning us. It knows we all have been yearning for it for the last 50 years. Today we can sense it. We feel it is within our grasp, sir, but the challenge is whether as a nation we are willing to marshal the fortitude, muster the patience, and mobilize the opportunities to stay the course until we all get to the destination as a proud and independent nation. As is inherent in our budget team, this coalition government believes there are two ingredients. If judiciously and consistently applied, we will get there, sir. These are growth and confidence. There is always a measure of both in our country. There is already a measure of both in our country. But growth needs stimulation and confidence restoration. 
the 2016 budget provides both the stimulant and the confidence this country needs to ensure the good life all Guyanese deserve beginning this significant year. Sir, the objectives of the Ministry of Social Protection for 2016 are framed within the parameters of equitable distribution of benefits for all Guyanese as extracted from the Sustainable Development Goals of Ending Poverty. Goal 1, achieving gender equality. Goal 5, reducing inequality within and among countries. The Ministry's thrust in 2016 will take Guyanese closer to the vision adumbrated by these laudable SDGs. To help fulfill the vision, there has been a 42% hike in the ministry's budget for 2016, taking us to $13 billion. This will not only help us to improve the services we offer, but also to expand our reach to vulnerable, far-flung communities. Hence. It will include the purchasing of two ATVs for the Labor Department to better monitor work sites in the hinterland to help stamp out child labor, prevent employers from underpaying or withholding workers' pay, and of course, be a fit against likely tip activities. The family. Mr. Speaker, the family is the fulcrum around which the Ministry of Social Protection and by extension, the government of Guyana has envisioned this and future budgets. We acknowledge that the Guyanese family is in dire straits. And so this year, we will intensify our efforts to target the restoration of the family as a foundation institution, Honorable Member Person. Broken families will produce broken youths who often cannot find employment and sometimes engage in delinquent behavior. Through the probation department, the ministry is working with several partners on the option of alternative sentencing for first-time offenders so that we can rehabilitate instead of condemn youths to penal institutions, and that is new. With the positive economic outlook and increased investment in education, I am sure we will provide gainful employment for our youths. We will provide training schemes, honorable member Passad, to help fathers and mothers and caregivers improve their parenting skills. Much of our focus in 2016 will be on the welfare and protection of children. Mr. Speaker, our commitment to children is also shown in the increase in budgetary allocation from 253 million in 2015 to 471 million this year. This is money intended to help us target child abuse, especially sexual abuse. Introduce a teen prevention pregnancy program, that's new. Launch a campaign about child protection and implement the early childhood development program. That will include licensing of daycare facilities. It also includes infrastructure works at the various buildings which house operations of the key agency. Emphasis will be placed on deinstitutionalizing many of the 700 plus children in formal care. For every child in Guyana belongs to a family, whether biological, foster, or adoptive. And so we will work, sir, to find families for these children. We will also introduce greater financial support for families, including microcredit 
for both male and female single parents. While cash transfers are helpful to persons in dire circumstances, we need to move holistically to help families seeking public assistance by offering skills training available through other government agencies. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, while the WOW program is up and running, the ministry is proposing to have another program that is called POWER. The acronym POWER means People of Worth Entrepreneurial Resources Project. For a while in the past, WOW focused on only single parents, POWER will provide loans to both males and females, married or not married. But it will be remiss of me, Mr. Speaker, to avoid raising in this honorable house the specter of child abuse, which is now stalking our society. One of the major programs targeting this scourge in 2016 is the launching of a campaign using all media outlets to raise the level of awareness of the Guyanese population to the plight of our children who suffered abuse. This is in an effort to propel them into action, to root out the scourge of child abuse in the society. We want to cut a covenant with all communities in Guyana, and perhaps we can start here today to be more proactive for our children and protect them. Through this covenant, the public will be educated on the destruction to the health and well-being of a child who is a victim of abuse and neglect. Mr. Speaker, I would like to now focus on the elderly. While I personally would like to tear down the eyesore that our senior citizens are housing at the palms, we cannot afford to replace it just yet. But this year, we will be spending some $20 million to purchase equipment to improve the functionality and efficacy of that historic institution. Sir, while we know it is not ideal, given the variety of constraints, we have nevertheless addressed critical areas, such as staffing at the institution and have done work to improve the aesthetics of the environment. Our broader vision, however, is to establish a national minimum standards for elderly care facilities. In addition, we have moved to correct the dietary deficiencies of the residents of the Palms. Specialists from the Georgetown Public Hospital have been working with us to help provide meals with specific dietary requirements for residents with identified illnesses. We have ongoing programs to build capacity of the staff of the geriatric and other institutions linked to the Ministry of Social Protection. Sir, I think I should have walked with some grass. <laughs> the elderly in this country have been too long, Mr. Speaker, forgotten. Their previously measly pensions epitomize that neglect. In a few short months, we, the APNUFC government, managed to hike their pensions by $5,000. Sir, and may I say, $5,000 added to what we met would give the pensioner $60,000 more each year. Sir, with $60,000, which is above the minimum wage, the pensioners, wherever they are, whether they are on the borders of Brazil or the borders of Venezuela, sir, that $60,000 can cover 
any formal allowances given to the pensioners. Sir, if we take into consideration what they got before, we would realize that our pensioners would have an excess each year of $22,000. Even if they pay electricity, even if they pay water, sir, they will have that at their disposal. And sir, as we go forward, we anticipate a fully automated system at the beginning of 2017 so that they would no longer require booklets to redeem their pensions, but can simply do so by producing their identification cards. Honorable Member, you have five minutes remaining. Mr. Speaker, I move that the Honorable Member be given five minutes, minutes extension to her allotted time. Thank you. I remember you will speak for 35 minutes. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker, these things may seem inconsequential, but cumulative, cumulatively, they are necessary to help lift the nation out of the retrogressive and punitive environment in which our people still access basic services. We are a coalition of change. And together we will change this. We will improve the life of, our, of every Guyanese, including the homeless, sir. This issue is being addressed largely by the Georgetown Resuscitation Committee. And very shortly, many of the homeless persons will be taken off the streets. Once these persons are screened, many will be sent to the Hugo Chavez home for reintegration and rehabilitation. There, sir, we will ensure that they are rehabilitated, receive life skills training to foster reunion with their families and communities, and use their newly acquired skills to gain employment wherever necessary. This year, sir, we will create a sustainable poultry and fish and vegetable farm at the center. Among the vulnerable are residents. Since our historic victory, pardon me, sir, I'm cutting as I go. Since our historic victory at the May 2015 polls, not only have we reviewed the management system, but we have introduced new programs such as the fish and chicken farms and provision of greenhouses for agriculture so residents can learn the skills to guarantee full integration into society. Sir, a partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization and our own Ministry of Agriculture have begun the process of self-sufficiency and presently, sir, there are 7,000 tilapias being reared. And very soon, through this cooperation, the fully constructed chicken pens will be teeming with birds for eventual consumption and, if possible, sale on the local market. Mr. Speaker, to cater for the residents at Hugo Chavez Physical Being, medical personnel from the Ministry of Public Health are now making regular visits to check up on them. Never happened before. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, there are still many of our vulnerable citizens who are not captured by the many available state institutions established to help secure them against the vagaries of modern life. I refer to those vagrants who are now being indiscriminately doused by private citizens in a bid to remove them from the streets. I repeat, sir, they're doing this in order to remove them from the streets. This is not our method of handling growing national challenges. Sir, we have improved conditions and the honorable member 
on the other side, um, who spoke about bacon salt fish last night, yeah. is talking about water. Right, Let right. me so inform him, sir, right. that we have improved at the night shelter running water, which they did not have for five years. Now, the institution is cleaned on a daily basis. Clothing is available for residents and we have installed washing machines with the help of corporate sponsorship to help those persons with their laundering. Sir, the night shelter held its first Christmas lunch last December, which was also sponsored by corporate citizens. And going forward, for the 50th anniversary, they will be holding a karaoke afternoon. And I extend the invitation to the honorable members of this house. Domestic violence and sexual offenses. The ministry also plans to have revisions to the Domestic Violence and Sexual Offenses Acts. And in this budget, we have allocated $40 million to construct a domestic violence center for victims. We also have financial allocations to improve our response to human trafficking, finalize the national gender policy, delink the probation and social services aspect from social security, create a suicide prevention manual, and partner with several NGOs and the University of Guyana to train persons in vocational skills and business management and conduct Honourable job member, placement you have, Honourable for member, you have four mother. minutes remaining. Thank you, sir. Sir? The Ministry and the University of Guyana will partner to offer social workers the opportunity to pursue a master's degree in this field to lift the standards of the profession. The program will be designed to reflect the Guyanese context and needs. Since the Ministry, a major employer of social workers, is concerned about the absence of licensure, and mechanisms to safeguard ethical standards and monitor and evaluate professional competencies. Hence, beginning this July, we will start an annual conference on professional practice for ethical standards. That will set the tone for what is required in local social work practice. The, minister, the ministry, sir, eagerly anticipates the establishment of a regulatory board that, withhold, that will hold all social work practitioners accountable. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, this is not an exhaustive list. And while we are responding to the many social ills, we are hopeful. We are hopeful that these new initiatives will arrest further deterioration of the social fabric of the Guyanese society. This ministry will continue being proactive rather than reactive. While some of our efforts are hamstrung because we would like to have more and more money and more and more staff, nevertheless, we will keep our commitment to the Guyanese people and intensify our focus on a good life. We have promised that, sir, and that we will deliver. <laughs> Numerous initiatives will be undertaken, and these will lend to a development agenda that addresses current and emerging challenges. Restoring the dignity of vulnerable groups, offer protection to every Guyanese, including persons with disabilities, the elderly and children, bridge gender disparities, and significantly reduce major social ills, such as youths in conflict with the law, violence and sexual offenses, violations of the labor laws, trafficking in persons, and youth unemployment. Sir, I do look forward to the implementation of the plans in this momentous budget. And it is with great joy and pride, sir, that I commend this budget 
to this house for its adoption. Thank you.